Was the death of Noor Amaleki a murder dictated by the demands for honor by her Iraqi immigrant father, or was this all just an accident? An Arizona jury would be asked to decide by a prosecutor intent on sending a message far beyond that courtroom. What kind of human being kills their own daughter over honor? Laura Record has prosecuted her share of murder cases, but this one was different. From the beginning, you labeled this an honor killing. The defendant labeled it an honor killing. If you look at his jail calls, if you look at what his son said. And Record intended to make the jury confront that issue. In her mind, Record would succeed only if the jury returned a verdict of first degree murder. That meant the killing was premeditated premeditated by a man driven by a sense of shame and dishonor. Even if the jury convicted Amaleki on the less serious charge of second-degree murder or even manslaughter, it would be a devastating loss for record and a victory for Amaleki and his public defenders. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the founding fathers of this country, Thomas, and Thomas Jefferson, has been quoted as saying, Nobody can acquire honor by doing what is wrong. January 24, 2011. Prosecutor Record made her opening argument to the jury as Al Maleki, the accused, listened to an Arabic translation. This is a case about a man, the defendant who committed these horrific and oh so long crimes, all in the name of his sense of honor. By presenting the case as an honor killing, Record arguably made the job easier for the defense team. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Abu Noor, father of Noor. If they could convince even one member of the jury to reject that motive, Al Maleki would almost certainly be acquitted of first degree murder and avoid a life sentence. It's common for Iraqi men to no longer be called by their first name when they have a child, but to take the name of their child. With Al Maleki sobbing in the background, one of his attorneys, Elizabeth Mullins, told the jury that what happened in the DES parking lot was an accident. And when he had yanked the wheel, he hits the curb, goes up on the median, and runs over a tree. He looks out, nor, nor my baby is lying in the, She's lying there. Two vastly different accounts of what happened. Who would the jury believe? The prosecution's first witness was Charles Cooper, who worked at the welfare office and said he saw Al Maleki run down Noor and Amal and then drive off. Standing in front of a blown up picture of the parking lot, Cooper was questioned by Stephanie Lowe, records co-counsel. Can you tell us what you saw then? Two, two females exited the building and then the screech of the tires and sounds of cracking and breaking and then the lady hits the ground. Then bystander Chanel Nakamoto tearily recounted how she rushed to Noor's aid right after she was hit. I pushed the hair out of her face and um, I held her hand. The defense then challenged the witness's recollection on cross-examination. I'd asked you a question about the vehicle being angled or not angled. Do you recall me asking about that? Um, no, not directly, no. Their objective, to dispel any inference that Al Maleki was lying in wait for his daughter and Amal. I must have misspoke. That's what you mean. Like this, I did, no, 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 no. One eyewitness the defense did not question, Amal Kalaf, Noor's friend who survived the crash. Judge Roland Steinley would not let us show her face as she testified through a translator that Al Maleki did not lose control, but steered his Jeep right at his daughter. Did you see him turn the wheel toward Noor? Did you not? Yes, yes. Why did he do it? Record played for the jury the entire two-hour interrogation of Al Maleki at the Atlanta airport. It included this stunning exchange that Record believes shows this was an honor killing. I know I got a reaction when I told you people were helping you. 
I think there's some people out there in your family and probably yourself that think what happened to Noor was okay. Let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. And your house has got a fire. Mm -hmm. And like just a part of the house got a fire. Mm -hmm. so we tried to stop the fire. When you ran over your daughter, were you trying to burn the whole house down? Or were you trying to put out a small part of the fire? No. We tried to take care of the fire. Is Nora the small fire? By what you're saying, yeah. Nora is the small fire and you're trying to put yeah, it out. So it doesn't ruin the rest of the family. Yes, because if I get in trouble, my family is gone. So what you're saying is if you sacrifice one small portion of the family, you're saving the rest of the family. Sir, sir, I, I don't know about this. My family or my friends try to help me because I'm, I'm in trouble. What did he mean by that? He is talking about his daughter. The fire was, was a metaphor? Yes, about his own daughter. Nor is not the fire. He is the fire. He is the one in trouble. Assistant public defender Jeff Kirchler would tell the jury record got it exactly wrong. His family is helping him. On cross, Kirchler also went after the detective who interrogated their client. Now, during the course of the two-hour interview, he tells you 15 times that it was an accident. If you counted them, I'll, I'll take that as how and many that he times? lost control 11 times. Okay. He maintains it's an accident, correct? Yes and no. Then the defense went right at the heart of the prosecution's theory that this was a premeditated honor killing. Kirchler accused Bowie of making up that whole idea. You gave him this, it was honor, because you knew something about his culture, right? Yes. And then the prosecution countered with the two police officers who responded to those prior incidents involving Noor and her father. And he told me that he would rather spend the rest of his life in jail than have his daughter continue to disgrace his family. He believed that his family law was higher than our law. Finally, Detective Bowie returned to the stand to read the translation of those jailhouse phone calls Al Malecki had made to his wife, using Al Malecki's own words against him. No one hates his daughter, but honor is dear. When you hear a piece of evidence like that, is there any doubt in your mind that you have this defendant nailed? No doubt. This was clearly a premeditated murder. Now it was the defense's turn. Is this an honor killing? I'm not so sure. And what happened next would stun many in the courtroom. Fox News reporting a question of honor continues after the break.